Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and I'm back with another episode of What's That Item? And this time, it's Zhang Zhao's staff. So, this is going to be a very, very special episode um, that we're probably never going to do again, and it's going to be very conversational. Uh, and I wanted to do this episode because of a current uh, event that I really, really want to cover. I will throw out a lot of disclaimers when we get to it, but first let's do the traditional thing and look at the item. So this item here, Zhang Zhao's staff, is Zhang Zhao's legendary weapon from the Mandate of Heaven DLC added into the game. And this staff here is his unique weapon that you can receive after completing an early game questline, where it will force you to capture the entirety of Taiyuan Commandery. And then you'll get this weapon on Zhang Zhao. And if we look at the weapon here, uh, it's a standard staff with a nice rooster on top, and it gives you plus 25 instinct, plus 10 authority, and plus 5 fervor from characters in local county. And fervor, once again, is a new mechanism in Mandate of Heaven, where it's similar to a religious-based spread that causes farther public order issues for other commanderies that are not Yellow Turban that will spawn new rebel groups. And this item here has a base damage stat of 1.5k melee damage and an armor piercing stat of just 164. It has a pretty good attack rate for a range uh, pole arm weapon. Uh, it has 30 melee attack rate. Uh, typically, these are usually 24 to 20. And so having a 30 makes up for its low armor piercing damage. But overall, it's still not a super strong weapon in the game. It's pretty, you know, middle of the pack. And the authority stat's obviously great since this goes on your leader in Zhang Jiao. Uh, Instinct makes up for his damage. And Yellow Turban Generals in general uh, are pretty strong with their various abilities. And if we look at the flavor text, uh, it says that, Is it a mere staff or a tool for sorcery? Rumors persist, but they can't harm Zhang Jiao. For hearsay and myth work in the rebel leader's favor. So it's kind of this mythical weapon. And this weapon is actually uh, historical in a sense, because there are historical recordings in San Guozhi, or the record version of the Three Kingdoms, where it records that Zhang Jiao carried what's called a Jiu Jie Zhang. And Jiu Jie Zhang here simply means a nigh segmented staff. And if you look at the image, you can see that his staff here is actually made of bamboo, and it actually has different links. So that's kind of why we talk about it as nine segments. Maybe the staff would have eight bumps, similar to a bamboo stick, and you have basically nine segments from that. And Jiu Jie Zhang here uh, is usually a Taoist type of walking stick, where you know transcended immortals or humans who have transcended into you know deity uh, from a Taoist religious belief would carry this staff, and it is often uh, referenced. Uh, in various Tao teachings where immortals will carry this. And for Zhang Jiao himself, who runs basically this Taoist sect, uh, he carrying the staff was symbolized uh, to give him healing powers. Since Zhang Jiao's main attraction to his followers is that he has healing ability. And during the early stages of the Yellow Turban Rebellion uh, buildup, Zhang Jiao used his uh, legendary healing ability to gather uh, followers as there were a series of natural disasters like droughts and flooding uh, that happened in the years before the rebellion that led to uh, famine and plagues that caused issue for the masses. So we mentioned this before in our Fall of the Han lore series, but Zhang Jiao basically ran this clinic where he told followers that he can write magical scrolls or what's called fu in Chinese. And then he would take these scrolls and burn them as an offering to the gods, and he would burn them over uh, bowls of water. And after the ashes from these scrolls fall into these water, the water become blessed into holy water, and he will offer these water to his followers. And once they drink it, it will cure them of all their diseases. And the caveat is that if your disease is not healed, it simply meant you weren't a true believer. And with how disease work and how the human immune system work, uh, there's always going to be some people that will recover um, from various diseases naturally, uh, with or without medicine. And those that survive would, you know, praise Zhang Jiao's great healing power and confirm that their belief in him is what saved them. 
So this is what Zhang Jiao is famous for, for being this great healer, and that attracted many followers to his cause. Obviously, Zhang Jiao didn't have any magical abilities, nor did his staff save him, as very soon after the Old Turban Rebellion, within six months, he would die of an illness himself while under siege. So we definitely know there's no magic in the Old Turbans. Now this uh, brings us to the topic that I really want to cover today, and that's the coronavirus that is uh, raging on uh, throughout the globe right now, uh, especially in China, which is a region that I'm quite familiar with. And since I have this platform here on YouTube, uh, I wanted to share some of the facts and uh, things I know about the virus to all of you, since I know I have uh, viewers from around the globe uh, in various regions. So even though this topic is completely uh, not game related, I feel like uh, it's something that's happening around the world uh, that concerns public health and the well-being of all of us as humans. So basically, I want to be as helpful as I can be uh, and use this little platform that I have to help everyone out to the best of my abilities. So a few disclaimer right off the bat. Uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I have my knowledge of the virus from news outlet and the internet. And I tried my best to find the most accurate sources, similar to how I would research a historical topic for all of you. I currently live in the U.S. I have not been back to China for over a year, but I do have family and friends who are currently in China. And I do pay attention to Chinese news, which is something that many of you probably don't have access to. So I feel like I'm best suited to share some of that with you guys. So right off the bat, uh, to give you guys a little bit of the scientific background here, uh, as the name suggests, coronavirus is a virus. And for those of you who have forgotten from their uh, biology class, viruses are uh, pathogens. Uh, basically, they're not uh, fully alive uh, entities that will take over your cell. Uh, they don't reproduce by themselves, but they will invade your cell, take over, uh, replicate inside, and then destroy the cell to come out. And that's how they multiply within your body. And that's how they harm you because they essentially kill a certain type of your cell. And the coronavirus here is aptly named Corona because it's the word for crown. And it's the shape of the virus's outer shell. They're basically these little spikes and it makes it look like a crown. It has nothing to do with the beer, even though the search for the beer Corona has gone up quite a bit since the virus. And that's why we have this name. And it's a respiratory virus, similar to the SARS virus and very similar to the common flu. Uh, it will attack your lung and uh, it will basically reduce your oxygen intake. Uh, you'll still breathe in the oxygen, but your body can't put the oxygen to good use. And because your body can't put the oxygen to good use, you will slowly die because without oxygen, uh, we're going to die. So the virus itself doesn't directly kill you. It just slowly weakens you to the point where uh, you're going to not be able to uh, breathe or supply oxygen to your body. So a lot of the death are perhaps, you know, heart attack related or other uh, events that are causes of this lack of oxygen. Now, just like how we deal with the flu, uh, we deal with the virus in a similar fashion where our body, if we have a good immune system, and we are young and strong and not elderly, uh, we're able to recover from the virus ourselves in most situations. Now, obviously, with medical help where you can, you know, be on medication for antiviral treatment, you can have, you know, pure oxygen supply for you to breathe through to help your body uh, maintain its strength as they come up with uh, antibodies to attach onto these viruses to wipe them out. Um, another little uh, fact here about uh, these viruses is like how we take the flu vaccine. What happens is that uh, the you know health organization in your country is going to study what flu might happen uh, during this year because these viruses do mutate and the shape on its outside will change and it will cause different effects in your body and the antibodies you had from previous flus will cease to work. So Another danger of this type of virus is that it could mutate. So that's why finding a cure for it is quite difficult. 
uh, just like we don't really have a cure for the flu. And every year, a new vaccine is trying to be created uh, to help us build immunity. And building immunity is a key point here for everyone, because the best thing we can do uh, in face of this virus is to strengthen your own immunity. You know, take your vitamins, get your sleep, and uh, exercise, and eat right. You know, it's all the stuff we hear all the time. But in a time like this, it's something that we should definitely try to follow, and that's why you should also avoid、uh, places of mass、uh, gatherings. You should wear a face mask.、Uh, try to disinfect、uh, your hands. Wash your hand.、Uh, simple stuff like that.、Uh, that's common sense during、uh, flu season because it is a respiratory disease, so it does spread through you know sneezes, coughs,、uh, basically water particles、uh, that comes from your respiratory system. So that's the general gist of this virus, and this virus has changed names many, many times.、Uh, it started out as、uh, coronavirus. It was also called, you know, Wuhan、uh, coronavirus for a time, and now the World Health Organization's official name is、uh, COVID-19.、Uh, I'm still going to call it the coronavirus for now, just because that's、uh, what everyone kind of know it as.、Uh, COVID-19 is kind of.、Um, Abbreviation form, you know. I think C O still stands for Corona, and then you know virus disease, and started in 2019. So it's kind of a code name for it from the World Health Organization、uh, to kind of you know tie down some of the、uh, racial connotations behind it.、Uh, I guess national connotations、uh, from it being you know nicknamed Wuhan's disease. But if you look on the map here,、uh, this is China's CDC. Uh, China's Disease Control Center's、uh, data as of、uh, February 26, 5:59、uh, local time, and、uh, I got this data. And right now, the total number of confirmed cases that has been identified in China since the start of the disease is 78,196 cases. The current number of confirmed cases who are still sick is 45,464 cases. And there has been thirty thousand fourteen cases that have recovered from the disease, and of those who are currently still、uh, with the disease, eight thousand seven hundred fifty-two are in critical conditions, and there has been a total of two thousand seven hundred eighteen death, and all these numbers are within China, and if you look on the map, this is a map of different provinces of China, and the darker shade red it is,、uh, the more、uh, disease is in the. Province, and if you look at the blue shade in the middle, that is Hubei, and that is the epicenter of this disease, and where Wuhan is the capital of this province.、Um, most of the disease, I would say, over eighty percent of the disease in China comes from this one province, and all the dark red you see、uh, rounds out to be just about a thousand cases、uh, in those、uh, provinces. And in the salmon color,、uh, where most of the map, it's single digits. So we're talking about less than a hundred,、uh, if not less than ten. And the white provinces have zero cases. And、uh, the improvement、uh, in the condition in China has been pretty dramatic in the last few days.、Uh, it has been for over a month now in China.、Uh, I think disease-wise, probably over a month and a half, if not two months. But China has gone under very strict quarantine. For over a month now, and it has finally started to slow down the disease,、uh, which would be great、uh, news if not for recent developments globally. And the term that we saw on the last page was epidemic. And nowadays, I think we're having this debate whether to upgrade this term to pandemic, which is more of a global spread of disease, and it seems to be going that way, which kind of prompted me to do this video since it feels like no longer. Isolated Chinese issue, and more of a global issue that perhaps my platform here on YouTube can reach out to、uh, more people that are related to this issue here. But、uh, enough about these data here.、Uh, we can take a look at the epicenter here in Hubei Province, and as I said earlier,、uh, most of the cases here in China comes from this province because the source of this disease, Ground Zero, is in Wuhan. Uh, in Chinese is Wuhan, and as you can see, the numbers、uh, for the cases here. I'm not going to read them out loud. It's very similar to the、uh, other data, but the key point is basically almost all the cases are from this province, and this province has been under strict quarantine for over a month now,、uh, 
Uh, you cannot leave Hubei if you're inside. Uh, supplies and medical team has been flying into this province throughout China and trying to uh, take control of the disease uh, head on here. And, you know, quarantine is pretty much enforced almost throughout China right now. Uh, but as uh, life have to go on, there has been dramatic measures to try to get uh, migrant workers back to their homes uh, after uh, Chinese New Year or back from their home, I guess, to the place where they work because the disease uh, had a very uh, untimely spread or timely. Uh, it's a blessing and uh, a curse. Uh, the curse is that the disease started right before Chinese New Year's. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the idea of Chinese New Year, it's a time when you go home, uh, very similar to uh, Thanksgiving in the U.S. that I'm familiar with. You're supposed to go reunite with your family and uh, celebrate the holidays then. And for many uh, who uh, are migrant workers uh, who work, you know, perhaps in a different province from where their hometown is, they will be uh, traveling back uh, to their hometown during this period. And Wuhan, although it's probably not a city that you hear every day, it is the 11th largest city in China with a population of over 9 million residents. In, and then additionally, there are over 5 million migrant worker or, you know, roaming population that comes in and out of the city every day. Uh, if you want to put 9 million in perspective, it's bigger than New York City. It's bigger than London. It's on par with Tokyo. So it is the 11th largest city in China, but it is a huge city. It is also a very big transit hub in China. It's one of the few cities in this uh, central region that can fly to all five continents. And that's uh, a big issue with the spread of the disease since uh, the disease was uh, very difficult to uh, identify in a sense. Uh, I'm not trying to give any excuses. Certainly there was a sense of uh, lack of judgment uh, on some of the official parts because right before the holidays, no one wants to have this new disease causing issues where you have to suggest, you know, shutting down all transportation in a city uh, of this size. Uh, imagine the day before Thanksgiving, uh, the mayor of Chicago have to come out and say, we have to shut down Chicago or we have to shut down New York City or shut down London where no one are allowed to go in and out uh, because we have a disease that's showing flu-like symptoms because you're going to have you know flu-like symptoms in the beginning of this disease it just be a fever a cough you know some sneezing and then you know no one knew how contagious or how dangerous this disease is and the good thing here is that if you look at the stats uh, it's not a very high mortality rate and we have many many people who have gotten the disease but with proper care uh, many have recovered the mortality rate is quite low compared to some other acute uh, respiratory diseases in the past. Uh, for example, SARS in 2003, which was a much more violent respiratory disease that caused uh, death rather rapidly. And a blessing for this timing of the disease is that uh, China was able to quarantine pretty much the whole country during a period of holiday. So uh, obviously, it's sad that you might not get to see your family, or if you travel back to your hometown, you might not be able to see your extended family. Everyone's stuck at home under a sort of, you know, self-quarantine, uh, but um, that's the situation. You got everyone, you know, on holiday, so you, no one really had to go to work. And uh, to be a little bit game-related, because I know many of you probably don't know Chinese geography, uh, for the game geography that you might be familiar with in the map, Wuhan is right on the north bank of the Yangtze River. And if you want to know its exact location in game, it's just across the bank from Changsha's trade port on the bend in the Yangtze River down south, uh, what would be in Jiangling uh, Commandery uh, near the livestock farm area uh, near the river. So not really a relevant place on the game map, but definitely a mega city today. Uh, that has many schools and the entire uh, Hubei province have uh, many, many economic activity, a very big hub uh, in China today because of the trade it has on the river. And regardless, uh, it's also a pretty famous uh, historical city, uh, many uh, sites. And if for those of you who are looking forward to 
the movie Mulan uh, later this year by Disney. Uh, Mulan is rumored to uh, come from Wuhan uh, historically, uh, even though her story is, you know, hotly debated. But uh, back to a serious matter. The main reason why I want to do this video today is because recently, uh, last two, three days, it seems like the situation for the disease, although it has gotten much better in China uh, with new cases uh, steadily decreasing day by day, the situation around the world uh, seems to have gotten much worse. And if we look at this uh, world map here, um, although China is the bright red here with the majority of the cases, the growth of cases outside of China has been uh, astonishing in the past few days. And I kind of want to bring this attention to you guys because I know there are many of you who uh, don't live in China, who are watching from Europe, from Southeast Asia, from Korea, from the US. And many of you might not follow this disease as closely as I have because I you know, have family and friends there in China. So I uh, worry about the situation. And, and as someone who is Chinese, uh, clearly I have uh, vested interests in this disease in a sense uh, because it's happening in my country. So uh, there are basically three big outbreaks right now globally. Uh, one such outbreak is in Korea. Uh, it's right between Japan and China, for those of you who know where it is geographically. Uh, hopefully, I don't have to uh, point it out too much. But the case in Korea here, uh, if we break down Korea's uh, map by their uh, regions, uh, is that they had uh, very few cases after the Chinese quarantine. And if you look at the chart here, the bar chart here on the right, they basically had no cases until last weekend. And what happened was that you had one 61-year-old elderly person who came down with the disease, and this person belonged to a fringe Christian group uh, in uh, Daegu. Uh, in Chinese, it's Da Chiu uh, in Korea. It's a region here in the bright maroon in southern South Korea. And they belong to a church group uh, that's viewed as a cult, Xin uh, uh, I guess that's my best attempt at the Korean version, but I know in Mandarin it's called Xin uh, Shi uh, basically means a new world. And this uh, church group basically has a leader who claimed that they can bring um, 144,000 people to heaven with them and uh, kind of started this, you know, second coming of Jesus type of Christian movement in Korea. And they have about a quarter million followers or so and it's viewed uh, by locals as a cult. Uh, but they have, you know, masses too. And uh, this uh, person who was sick with the coronavirus attended uh, one such mass, or actually multiple masses over the weekend, and the cases started spiking. And uh, it's created this very awkward situation in Korea where you have uh, people who are, you know, secretly closet members of this cult uh, who don't want to report that they were at these cult meetings, but they ended up being sick. So they spread it to their place of work you know, teachers, uh, flight attendants, uh, people in the military, and people who are, you know, officials. There is a medical official in this uh, city here who are responsible for controlling this disease who has come out and said that he is a member of this church and he has come down with the disease and that all 50 of the top medical officials in this city have to be quarantined now uh, because of this. And there are top officials in the government who are also confirmed with the disease. Uh, the military is basically on quarantine as well. It's basically a kind of out of control situation in South Korea in a sense. And to make matters worse is that this church group uh, feels like they're unfairly uh, attacked because of uh, the fact that they, uh, in one way or another, caused this outbreak. And they are unhappy with... Uh, the way the media is portraying them and the government is portraying them. And to make matter worse, uh, the government in Korea, uh, democracy, multiple parties, um, have very uh, big bipartisanship as well. And the last president of Korea uh, ended her term because she was impeached. So this church group, uh, the leadership actually supports the party that was impeached. So they're very much against the current government. And they feel like the current government is kind of targeting them through this event. And they have threatened to host rallies uh, in the cities to uh, voice uh, their political uh, voice kind of here. And the government has kindly asked these groups to not host such rallies. 
uh, but it's very difficult because uh, it's a free speech issue. Uh, they can argue that you know the government who opposes their views, and since they support the opposition party, that they're being suppressed uh, by not allowing them to uh, set up these rallies. And it's a bit of a messy situation. Now, I tend to avoid politics entirely, so I'm not going to comment too much on a country which I am uh, not entirely familiar with. Um, I have no access to uh, primary source news because I don't understand Korean, but uh, my knowledge come from, you know, a uh, Chinese news outlet, um, some Koreans who speak Chinese uh, that I know who have told me a little bit about the situation. Uh, but that's basically the gist of it in Korea. Another issue, if we look at the global map here, is that we have in the Middle East a very bright pink in Iran. And this is another uh, very sensitive topic because now we're not only talking about geopolitical issues, we're also talking about religious issues. I guess in a sense, the last issue in Korea was also religious issues. By no means am I targeting uh, religious issues. It just happens that these religious uh, events are uh, places of mass gathering, and that's, that's the way things are. And the situation in Iran uh, is pretty much um, a transparency issue. Uh, I'm sure the local government have their uh, reasons as well, and they do things with, you know, their own set of rationale. Uh, Iran as a country, for those who are unfamiliar, have been under, you know, global sanctions for the longest time and uh, for their nuclear program and other issues. And because of such, you know, resources, medical resources, financial resources are much more restricted because they can't import from a lot of countries. So perhaps that's a reason why they might uh, underreport. But what they have reported so far uh, to the World Health Organization is a very high death count, but a very low case count. So as we have seen from China's you know, uh, sample size there, that this isn't a very uh, high mortality disease, but somehow in Iran, it's a very high mortality disease where about one-fourth of the people who have gotten it have died. So the global consensus here for Iran is that they have a much bigger uh, issue in terms of how many people are sick and that they are underreporting or they have not detected uh, in various sense. Uh, both could be true. Uh, they could be underreporting uh, because they just had their election and uh, many people, including the U.S., have long accused that their elections are you know, frauds because they're very low turnouts and there are not many candidates and they don't want uh, the disease to be an issue to affect their election. And that's the same in the U.S. The U.S. is also having election year. I'm sure the disease is going to be an issue for uh, both parties in their uh, election platform, uh, but that's not really an issue we're here to talk about. Uh, but, you know, Iran also has an issue, and it's going to spread. You know, uh, if they're going to underreport it, they're not going to control it and admit the problem. It's going to spread to its neighboring countries. You know, Iraq already kind of shut down its border with Iran uh, over this issue, uh, but it's also going to spread uh, back east uh, towards Pakistan and India, where you have very high population density. So it could, you know, snowball into a much bigger issue as time goes on. And uh, recently, you know, it's kind of almost become a meme now uh, in yesterday's news, is that Iran's health minister or vice health minister is doing a press conference about the coronavirus and uh, people you know have it recorded that he was you know wiping away cold sweat and sneezing and blowing his nose on tv and a few hours after he came out and confirmed that he in fact now had uh, the coronavirus and uh, it's a silly situation but it is just very tragic situation as well uh, in a sense and lastly uh, the third uh, big major area here is italy and it's very uh, bright pink as well. Um, as of recording this uh, episode here right now, I think it has spiked over 400 cases in Italy, and it's one of the most mysterious uh, situations out of all three. Uh, so far, uh, in many of the countries, it's very easy to identify uh, where the source of the disease is, uh, whether someone who uh, came from China originally, since the disease did come from there, or someone who had come in contact with someone who recently been to China, or, you know, some story of that sort. In Italy, they can't find patient zero. They don't know where the source is. They just know in northern Italy, there's been spikes of the case. 
and is causing quite of an issue there, especially during the fact that it's their carnival season right now. They just had Milan Fashion Week. So these are basically two very global events uh, where multiple people from different nationality are going to visit them. And since Europe, uh, the European Union have shared borders where people can, you know, travel freely between countries, it's also going to be a growing issue for the entire continent as well. And we already start to see some signs of that. You know, I think yesterday there was a confirmed case of an Italian doctor on vacation in Spain, and uh, they had to quarantine the whole hotel where the doctor was staying. And for Spain in particular, they're also suffering through a natural disaster right now. Um, for those of you who are interested, there's this dust storm from Africa that swept across uh, the Spanish peninsula, and it's creating this uh, you know, red dust storm over whole cities. And if you see some of the pictures, it just looks like they're on Mars. It's really amazing uh, to look at in pictures, but I bet it's very terrible to live under. And with the spread of the virus throughout Europe, it's definitely going to be uh, worse here. And I think Paris also had its first death of the coronavirus recently. So this brings us around uh, to why I really made this video in the first place. Because this is uh, no longer a China issue. Uh, I think yesterday was also the first day where global cases increase uh, was more than Chinese case increase. Right, Cases outside of China overtook the number of new cases within China. And even the U.S. where I am at, uh, there's this constant fear of what's called a community spread, where the spread of the disease come from, you know, person to person contact inside the communities. Because right now, I believe in the U.S. there are only around 60 cases. Um, the, the map here shows 57, but I think has increased to about 61 as of the time I'm recording here, versus the time when this was generated. And those cases are all documented. You know, you have 15 cases of people who have recently been to Wuhan. You had about 45 people who came back uh, from the cruise ship that was off Japan, who uh, where there was an outbreak of the coronavirus on the cruise ship. And then you also had, uh, I think, believe one possible case uh, reported last night where in California you might have the first case of community spread. So these are all uh, issues happening around the world uh, revolving this one virus. And uh, it is similar to a flu virus, so uh, we can prevent it in a very similar fashion. So we want to end it on a positive note for all of you guys. Uh, just be careful, you know, sleep well, eat your vitamins, exercise, and uh, try to stay away from, you know, places of mass gatherings if you don't have to go. And if you have to go, uh, try to protect yourself. You know, wear face masks if you can. Uh, wash your hand frequently, disinfect your clothing and shoes, or just take them off at the door. Uh, don't spread them out into your home. Uh, try to ventilate your home, open the window sometime, let some fresh air in, and um, that's going to help you a lot. And that's kind of the experience uh, that China's gone through. And uh, China's quarantine is, you know, very costly and very uh, unique for China because of China being uh, an authoritative government. There's a lot of things that's possible in China that's not possible in uh, maybe your country. Uh, like the case we mentioned in Korea, you know, you can't really uh, forcefully quarantine a whole city. Uh, you can only try to minimize uh, spread. Uh, China can just uh, flat out quarantine a whole province and, you know, force you to stay home, uh, ask you to check your temperature every day, upload it on WeChat. Uh, so that they can have a tracking uh, of who might be sick. Uh, they can have, you know, state enterprises. You know, Sinopec, the biggest oil company in China, has transformed itself to make face masks on its production line, uh, has transformed itself to sell vegetables in Beijing. So in the capital of China, at all the Sinopec gas stations, they now have, you know, crates of vegetable going for 99 RMB uh, a crate, which I think comes down to about, 14 or 15 dollars and it's three day worth of vegetables and all you have to do is drive up uh, to the gas station you don't have to leave your car you stay inside they load the crate into your uh, trunk and off you go so uh, they have a lot of different ways to uh, fight the disease they can rally medical team army doctors from various provinces to go into hubei uh, to build new hospitals in 10 days you know, these are very, you know, unique uh, situations that's probably only possible in China. 
And, you know, in the countries like U.S. where I am at, uh, perhaps during World War II, you know, you have wartime rules where perhaps you can tell Ford to stop making, you know, passenger cars and make Jeeps and uh, ammo trucks for the army. And it's kind of like that in China right now. And uh, it's helping. It's uh, helping at least to stop the spread of disease uh, in China at the moment. So hopefully uh, everyone can stay safe. And that kind of ends my rant. It's a very unique episode here today. Uh, I really want to do it. I'm sure many of you have uh, perhaps different feelings about this. So uh, feel free to let me know. So thank you guys for putting up with my rant. And we'll be back to regular gaming content going forward. So see you guys next time. Bye.